the Voice of Russia in London. This is Alice Lanyado. As part of our regular series of interviews with Russians living in the UK, this week I spoke to Timofey Hadkov. Timofey is half Russian and half Ukrainian, and he's studying for a PhD in physics at the University of Exeter. I began by asking Timofey how he came to study in the UK. Basically, I got an offer, not exactly an offer, uh, it was actually an advertisement in my university at the time when I was just about to finish uh, my degree in master and I decided what to do next, either I just give up and find some job, which was at that time problematic because it was 2008, and the crisis starts all over the Europe and the world, <laughs> I thought okay, so basically maybe I should do the same which my friends did. So they applied for some university in America, passed some tests like TOEFL, some general tests in math, physics. Where's your university? Moscow, Moscow Institute of Physics and Technology. But you're not from Moscow, are you? I'm not. I'm from Ukraine. <laughs> so you were thinking what to do next? Yeah, and they suggested why not to try the same thing. There are lots of advertisement on our university website. And I just uh, find some. And, for example, one of those was about the position in Sweden for theoretician and another one for experimentalist here in Exeter. And the professor was a Russian professor, Alex Savchenko, who died two years ago, unfortunately. But by that time, yeah, I just sent an application form, some my interest, some degrees. And I got a call in months, or months and a half, and it was sort of interview, but I didn't expect this at all. And I just bus interview and then I was invited to the university so that's the story I mean I just get an invitation and I said why not so that's it I, I can say that I have the strict purpose like go exactly to Exeter it was like several applications and the first who gave me an opportunity to come so is this postgraduate this. work yes and postgraduate research yeah you're, you're on a PhD program yeah I'm in a PhD program yes and when will that finish when will you become a doctor Ah, it's a very painful question for me to be honest, <laughs> because officially we have to finish, like, um, we still have one one more year, maybe one more year and a half, but uh, the university stopped paying money in July, so <laughs> it will be a little bit problematic, so probably we have to finish by September, October, that's my plans and some of my colleagues as well. How would you explain your work? to someone who didn't know anything about physics? Uh, it's complicated <laughs> in two words. Like, we are studying the modern world now, nanomaterials. It's called nanomaterials, which uh, has lots of applications in electronics, in some uh, sensors for medicine, and so on and so on. Like for TVs, like screens, maybe even for storage of energy, there are lots of work done in this particular area and I mean I'm just doing the small area of research at this particular topic in which is called graphene the material. What's the most difficult thing about your work? The most difficult? Uh, you have to learn a lot all the time like you have to not only know the things which you studied before uh, which is difficult not to forget because it was a long time ago and then you repeat 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 again but also there are lots of lots of new papers every day and you have to read them, find out what has been done, what you should repeat actually. What do you like about living in England? Freedom, I would say. From one point of view it's controversial answer, like freedom means, yeah, so somehow you are not allowed to do lots of things which you are allowed, say in Ukraine for example, but... Like what? Come to go across the field, you have to ask someone because they're basically someone's field, there are owners which is not so in Ukraine. I mean, there are lots of places, lakes, whatever, which are not private. You just go anywhere you want. If you want to do some crazy things, you do these crazy things. The freedom, I mean, you can try different things, and especially from salary point of view, I feel more comfortable here because you have money, which is enough for live, try different things, buy food, you know. When I was a student in Ukraine, I had very small salary and scholarship. Yeah. Was it much it was less than British students? Like, uh, it was so small that you can like, hardly buy food or whatever. I had to walk 
simultaneously to earn some money, otherwise <laughs> it would be difficult to live. Do you think British students have an easier time? Uh, depends which students, because I heard like master student, bachelor student, they basically also like possess money from parents. They had also to work in order to compensate because they had to pay for study, which was in Russia and Ukraine. Um, in lots of universities, still don't have to pay like there is a free, free of charge. What do you miss about home? Parents, <laughs> friends, <laughs> uh, food. To be honest, even though I get used to English food which seemed to me quite nice, not all the time, but Ukrainian food, the sort of products which you can buy, you cannot find easily here, even considering that there are some Polish shops, uh, Lithuanian shops, lots of which are similar or close in the taste to Ukrainian food, but it's still not the same. Like what, for example? Ah, <laughs> uh, you know, some uh, pickled, like vegetables, tomatoes, cucumbers, which you call gherkins, and you know, mushrooms, some you know, meat, uh, mincemeat, lots of dishes which you can buy in cafe and uh, restaurant, but you cannot buy here. You have to cook it yourself if you find some ingredients. Uh, the first year was very difficult. You had to spend some time to investigate where the shops which you, uh, in which you can buy these ingredients, like beetroot, some like ready hot redis or something. <laughs> so you must miss your mother's cooking. Uh, not all, I mean, I can cook myself. Yeah, but I like when my mother is cooking. <laughs> and what was strange to you about England when you first moved here? Strange? Ah, the first strange thing is two tubs. <laughs> Which really was... Two tubs uh, in the bathroom? In the bathroom, whatever. In the bathroom, in the kitchen. I said, bathroom, you still can't survive because you basically need just to wash your hands and your face. But when you're washing the plates, in a kitchen and you look how dirty the sink. For example, I lived in the university accommodation with lots of Chinese and it was messy all the time. You cannot basically pour some water inside the sink and wash your plates. I mean, it was disgusting. Anything else? Um, like, ah, it was very surprising that here you don't have the centralized system of heating, which in big cities like Kiev, you have centralized heating. You just pay for this and we've got the you know heating season where they switch it say in October and switch it off in March. Here you have to switch it on yourself and for example hot water you have to use this uh, gas uh, heater and sometimes when someone from downstairs just open the tap <laughs> it's so problematic because basically you've got cold water which was also a little bit strange. <laughs> Were you cold in your first winter here? No, no, no. Temperature here Average temperature, you know, 10 degrees, 12 degrees, which is in cold times in Ukraine and Russia, especially in Moscow, where I studied, it was minus 20. Some degrees. people don't like the damp here, though. Yes, yes, yes. My first year was awful in terms of weather. It seemed to me like it rained every day, and I even start to compare this with Scotland. It was awful. It was raining every, every single day, several times. I don't remember the single day when... It wasn't raining the first year, but the second and third year when I was here, the weather was nice. And finally, what what are your plans after you finish your PhD? Uh, probably find some job, apply for a job. Is uh, it likely that that'll be somewhere outside Russia and Ukraine? Yeah, it's more likely. Uh, I cannot predict, of course. I mean, if I cannot find anything, I will come back, which I can always do. <laughs> because I have a nationality of Ukraine, so I can come back and find some job in Ukraine. But I will try, why not?